If you want to learn how to master the art of jamming on bass, then stick around. I'm Luke from Become a Bassist, and in this lesson you're going to learn exactly how to thrive in three incredibly common jamming scenarios, plus you'll get three tips for nailing it every time you want to jam with other people. When you're first starting out on bass, playing with other people can be intimidating. It can be scary, but it's also probably the most fun and most rewarding parts of playing music. There's almost nothing better than jumping up on stage or hunkering down in a friend's garage and creating amazing music from scratch. But how are you supposed to do it? Well, your approach will have to change depending on the situation. Sometimes you'll have a ton of freedom and other times you'll kind of have to fall in line a little bit more. So right now, let's go through three of the most common jamming scenarios for bass players and how to approach each one of them. Common scenario number one is where it's just you and a drummer. This happens a lot. A lot of drummers and bass players get together to work on stuff and jam. This can be some of the most fun you can have as a bass player and it's also where you can be the most free. If it's just you and the drums, you don't have to worry about playing any wrong notes. There's nobody else there dictating the notes to you, so anything you play is right by default. If a drummer starts playing something, you can set something up as a simple one chord vamp and play with that. So if I had this drum track here, I can do basically whatever I want. So I'm going to pick the people's key of E and just make up a bass line using the root. Here we go. All I'm trying to do is line up my notes with the notes in the kick drum. Pretty simple so far, right? I talk about this process in another video of mine called the Instant Baseline Formula. Check it out if it's uh, something you're interested in. But from here though, you can do all sorts of different things. You can, for example, mess around with different octaves. Instead of just playing the low E, you can play the high E's as well. So you might go... High E up there. Up there as well. You can make some variations on the groove. You might add different notes. Something like that. Uh, you might even play uh, some fills. So you might go... these things are up for grabs. They're all things that you can do when there's nothing, no one else playing. If you want to get really fancy, you can change or add to the notes you're using and effectively write brand new chord progressions. Yeah, you might do something like this. this because there's nobody else playing any other notes. You can't be wrong. The one thing you do have to be aware of is that when you do this, it's going to affect what the drummer does as well. It's not like playing with a track like we're doing now. Everything you do will very subtly change what the drummer does. If you start getting busier and more intense, then the drummer will probably, or at least hopefully, follow you in that intensity. If you back off in volume and intensity, the drummer is going to likely do the same. That way you can have a real musical conversation. Uh, and when you find the right drummer that you can do with this, it's like magic. It's incredible. Common scenario number two is similar, except it's with a rhythm instrument, or a guitar, or a piano, or any instrument where they can play actual notes, unlike drums who just deal in rhythm exclusively. Now this changes things for you. If you're only playing with a drummer, you can play whatever notes sound good. However, with a chordal instrument, a harmonic instrument, there's an extra layer of complexity. Not only do you have to focus on the groove, now you have to play notes that work well with the other instrument as well. For example, let's say you're playing with a guitarist and they're playing the chords E, A, F sharp minor and then A again. You'd want to play something that works well with that and supports it. And usually that means playing the root notes. So if we bring up, bring up a track with those chords, it'll sound like this. A, F sharp minor, A. Now you could just play the roots of the chords as long notes, and that'd sound like this. One, two, three. The, pro 
problem with this is that it's not particularly interesting and doesn't really add anything to the music, yeah? So, in this kind of situation, try to imagine what a drummer might play and then play a bass line to that, yeah? So in this kind of situation, I'm imagining the drummer going, uh, one, two, three, four, do boom, boom, Sorry for my terrible beatboxing. <laughs> yeah, but if I were to take some of those uh, same rhythms and transfer them onto the bass, I might come up with something like this. Three, four. Yeah? Hear how this is actually moving the music forward now? It's not just there with no purpose, it's actually adding something. completely different vibe. Also, if there's a really riffy line that another instrument is playing and you want to jump in and play the same thing, a lot of the time that'll work really well too. For example, if a guitarist played this, you can jump on that. And you already know it's going to work really well. One really helpful tip in this situation is to learn to recognize some basic guitar chord shapes. If you can already play guitar, you can probably already do this. But if not, you can uh, learn from my video all about what I call the glance method. If you know what the basic chord shapes look like, then you can at the very least play the right root notes. And if you're playing with a piano player, you can do the same thing by learning the notes on the keyboard and see what they're doing with their left hand. A lot of the time, not all the time, but a lot of the time, uh, and especially if they want to be helpful to you, their left hand will be the roots of chords. The final jamming scenario is when you play with a full band. This is a combination of the previous two approaches. You have to stay in the pocket with the drummer and make sure the notes you're playing line up with the notes everyone else is playing. In this kind of situation, jam sessions usually fall into one of two categories. There are the jam sessions where people will play and jam on actual songs, and then there are the open freeform jams where there's no song, the music is just being made up on the spot. So if you find yourself at a freeform jam, the songs that get played are often either over a single chord or a very simple chord progression. This means for you as a bass player, you need to know what the roots of the chords are and plus lock in with the drummer. Essentially combining the first two approaches from the first two scenarios. You might see a guitar player playing something like this. Yeah? And the drum track might be something like this. Yeah. So you can combine that information into a very simple bass line. One, two, three, four. Again, if you're comfortable, you can spice up the bass line a bit. This is very simple, and that's totally fine. I would rather hear a simple, clean, in-the-pocket bass line over one that's complicated, sloppy, and completely out of time. One big tip in these kinds of open jam sessions is actually talk to the people you're playing with. If you don't know what the chords are, ask, ask someone who's playing them. If you get lost in the drummer's groove, just ask where's beat one so you can reorient yourself. There's no harm in asking, and the music will sound so much better for it. Now, if you're going to the other kind of jam session where existing songs get played, your approach has to change a little bit, but it's actually simpler. You just have to know some songs to get up and play. Now, the good news is that it's, if it's a weekly or a monthly jam session, there will probably be a lot of songs that get played every time. For example, at a ton of jazz jam sessions, Autumn Leaves gets called. If it's a blues jam, Stormy Monday might be on the cards. If it's a pop session, Mark Ronson's Valerie might make an appearance. Whatever it is, the first time you go to a jam session, just make a note, make a mental note of what songs they play and go away and learn them. Then the next time you're there, you're already a step ahead, already prepared. Then when you get up on stage and, ask what, and they ask what you want to play, you've already got two or three options that you know are a good fit for the session. I want to give you a few final tips before you can go that can be really helpful. Tip number one, learn the 12 bar blues. Seriously, this can be an absolute lifesaver when it comes to jamming with people you've never played with before. 
You may know completely different songs, you may not even know any songs at all, but most people are at least familiar with the 12 bar blues and they can get through it. Obviously, if you're trying to get up at a blues jam session, this is essential knowledge, but the blues is found in tons of other styles of music as well. Tip number two is use what you already know in your jamming. If you've been playing for a while, you've probably learned some songs, learned some riffs, learned some licks, and you can absolutely use them when you jam. You know they're gonna sound good, and you already like them, so it just makes total sense. Just make sure that if you're playing with other chordal instruments, that you're playing, uh, playing your licks, your, lift, your riffs in the right key for them. That means you might have to move the shapes of the, rick, the, of the licks around, but that's pretty simple. The last tip I can give you is to actually have fun. Look, I know it can be scary to play with new people, especially ones that might have years more experience than you do. Don't forget though, everyone is there to make everyone else sound good. Plus, most good musicians are very encouraging of the less experienced ones. I know when I'm playing jam sessions, I try to be super welcoming, super encouraging, and most people are like this. Have as much fun as you can with as many different people as you can. I guarantee you'll learn a ton and you'll learn it in a much deeper way than if you just practiced by yourself at home. You should do that too, obviously, but the lessons you learn from playing with others will be with you for life and there will be a lot of them. If you really don't think you're ready to jam with other people just yet, you can get prepared by downloading my Beginners Starter Pack. It's a collection of some of my absolute best material for beginners, and if you want to get to the point where you're playing with people quickly, you'll learn exactly what to focus on and what you can ignore for now. It's like the roadmap I wish I'd had when I started learning bass. To get it, just click the link in the description, sign up on that page, and I'll send it straight to your email address, and it's all free, my gift to you. To recap though, you learned how to jam on bass with other people. You learned about three common jamming scenarios. The first was just you with a drummer, and you learned that you had a ton of freedom here with your notes, as long as you stayed on top of the rhythm. The second scenario was you playing with a chordal instrument. You learned that this was a tiny bit trickier, because you need to make sure your notes lined up with theirs. And finally, you learned about the two types of full band sessions, the freeform jams and the kind where existing songs get played. You also got those three tips, learning the 12 bar blues, using riffs and licks that you already knew, and of course, not forgetting to have fun. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate having you with me. Make sure and download the Beginner's Starter Pack, I'd love to see you in there. Uh, I'm Luke from Become a Bassist, and I'll catch you really soon. Mm -hmm.